so yeah, I'd like to show you guys all a quick demo on how we can use React to interact with hardware. Um, holding here is an Arduino Uno board, and connected to it is an LED bulb connected to pin 13. Um, and to save me some time and to give you guys all a little demo of Joshua's talk tomorrow on the React Native Playground, um, I'm going to go ahead and load up the app on the Playground. I'm just hoping the internet works here. There we go. So instead of running this through the simulator, I'm actually going to use the, the option to run on my device. We have an app available for Android and iOS, so if you guys have a chance to download it before tomorrow and take a peek, it'd be great. So I'm going to go ahead here and load the Playground app. And I'm going to go ahead and try to scan this code. There we go. And this should just load us a really simple switch that if connection works, there we go. And hopefully the magic works. And it does not. <laughs> it's, it's because of me, of course, yeah. One second. Ah. It worked? Yeah. So let's just make sure the board's ready. OK, give that one more try. So that wasn't it. OK, yeah. Give it one more try. There we go. There we go. So we got that to blink. <laughs> so uh, I also have a demo for Android. Unfortunately, I can't project it on the screen, but maybe if I hold it up here, you guys can kind of visually see me scan the same QR code with Android. There we go. So it's fetching the JS bundle. And this should load another switch. I'm just going to take a little bit. The connection's kind of tricky. And there's an on and off switch. I'm going to hit that on right now. And there we go. We got it blinking again. So that takes care of mobile. But now we want to talk about how we can interact this with web. So it's a little bit too much to ask for people every time when they approach a device like this to enter the URL. So um, how many people here are familiar with Google's new beacon protocol, Eddystone? Anybody? One? OK, so with Eddystone, it's pretty similar to iBeacon, but with one significant difference is that we're able to actually broadcast URLs via Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, so this thing is fairly new, but one interesting way to interact with it is using Chrome on iOS. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down my notification. And you say right there, it says scanning for physical web objects. And it's going to redirect me to a website that's going to have an on and off button. And this up again. I'm here. I'm here. You are? Okay. Yeah. You got it? Got it. I'm going to turn it on. We've got it blinking. Let's turn it off. Perfect. So real quick, let me jump and show you guys the code that's actually making this all work. Let's start from the server. So the server is all written in JavaScript. The main library being used is Johnny5, which is uh, basically a JS wrapper for the Formata protocol used by Arduino. Um, so here we're just creating an HTTP server. When the board is ready, um, we're going to go ahead and register an LED on pin 13. We're going to start the HTTP server on port 3000 and start advertising the URL. And how this works right now is we're using Socket.io with WebSockets. And here we're setting up the connection and a listener on when the LED is on. We're just going to go ahead and blink the LED. And when we send the LED off, we're going to go ahead and stop it. The cool thing here is on the, the code for Android and iOS is exactly the same. There's really no difference. Just copy and paste it over. You can see we have the component life cycles here. Um, on initial state, we're going in and creating a new I.O. Right now, it's pointing to uh, ngrok that I'm running on my local host. Um, again, Android the same. And the web version is pretty much the same. The only difference here is instead of rendering a switch, I'm rendering a button. Um, so I think the cool thing here to think about is that from the board all the way up to our clients, both web and mobile, we're programming this all with JavaScript, and that they're all sharing the main dependency. What we're using for this is socket.io. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, you can definitely reach out to me tomorrow. Uh, I'll be around. So hopefully that was pretty interesting. Thanks. Cool. Very nice.